Well, good evening, YouTube. So here on the Junkyard Tailgate channel, we have a uh, special project tonight. We're going to um, reassemble and start the John Deere 445. So after yesterday's video, uh, I picked up where I left off on the front cover. I put some oil in the uh, sump and tested the oil pump just to be sure it was working. So it only takes a, a revolution or two for this pump to start pumping oil. Uh, so pleased with that. So we'll um, go ahead and install this front cover. I do a last uh, round of cleaning, put on a couple of uh, O-rings on the left-hand side there, uh, add, some, uh, add the gasket, and then bring the cover over and put it on. So what you have to do is align that cover and then rotate the engine just slightly in order to get that uh, the gears to mesh because the uh, the crank, the cam, the um, oil pump, and the governor gear, well, and the water pump all run off of the same uh, gear system. Yeah. So the new water pump looks much better than the old. Very little play. Uh, that's the way it should be and uh, it is a mechanical seal, it's spring-loaded, so I got a little bit of movement, but not near as much as I did on the old pump, so I think that was a wise decision. And so we're installing the water pump now. Going to uh, put some bolts in it and put the top cover on that um, water pump. But first, it's break time, it's hot today, and I enjoyed an icy with my bloodhound today. He loves those things. <laughs> so back to work now. So I'm using a little bit of RTV on this cover for the water pump to hold a gasket. This RTV is good for, I think it's like 600 degrees. So it's, it's, um, it'll never see 600 degrees on this engine here. So it's good for this application and a little bit of uh, RTV and then the gasket. So I gather the right bolts and install this cover to the water pump. Torqued all the bolts down. On both the water pump and the cover. Time to install the seal now. Put a little bit of lube on the seal. Uh, install it gently. I made a seal driver out of a piece of the PVC pipe. Seems to work okay. Guess the proof is in the pudding, whether it holds uh, oil or not. But there you go. Now it's time to set the intake and exhaust valve clearance. This engine calls for 10 thousandths of clearance. This feeler gauge set has a 10 thousandths brass shim. So I'm going to use that for display purposes. I turned the engine over to top dead center using a screwdriver down in the uh, uh, cylinder on top of the piston to try to feel for top dead center. And then check the clearance and adjust the clearance using a feeler gauge and the um, screws and nuts on top of the uh, rocker arms.
So I double checked myself with a little different method and this may not be in the instruction manuals but I held my thumb over the spark plug hole and really sort of felt the pressure uh, compression and uh, double checked myself and I actually made some adjustments. Uh, I don't show all that on camera here but I got a finer tuned adjustment I believe. It's kind of tough to feel with a screwdriver where the top dead center is. Um, at any rate uh, just a little food for thought there. Uh, I'd like to hear feedback from other folks and how they've done it, but this seemed to work for me. Next, I torqued the spark plugs to 20 foot-pounds per the spec on the spark plug. First one side, then the other. Now it's time to install some sensors and some ancillary hoses and such on the engine. Let's put on the intake manifold. Now it's time to install the uh, throttle body. This is electronic fuel injection. There goes the governor arm, and that governor arm gets a, a special adjustment when the uh, throttle is in the lowest position. You move the, um, the uh, governor arm counterclockwise as far as it'll go and tighten it down on that arm. So I put the valve covers on, uh, thought I'd recorded it and apparently I didn't, but now it's time to put oil in. This takes almost two quarts of oil. Yep, oil levels where it needs to be. Slightly over full. It'll take a little bit for the um, oil filter. So we're good to go. So while I was working today, I discovered I had a, an extra battery clamp in my toolbox from my previous build. So I took my makeshift uh, angle iron off and put on the John Deere version. So that'll work much better. Now it's time to move the engine over and install it. This is progress, fellas. Okay, there you go. So I didn't show it on camera, but I tightened the motor mounts and began to hook up all the rest of the hoses and wires and such, as well as the muffler. So next goes on the muffler.
Next, we crawl under the tractor and install three bolts through the isolator donut that connects the drive shaft to the engine. Next, we grease the U-joint uh, that is at the rear of the tractor up next to the um, transaxle. It's hard to get to. It's a good time to do it while I'm under there. So I did that. There you go. So it can be reached from the underside. The other option is to take off the fenders, which I didn't want to do but I was able to get to it from the other side, which is good. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, or dissent. You've been watching the Junkyard Tailgate channel. A good day.